This is Rachel Chateau with Pride.com, and today I'm speaking with Tyler Kornack, director of the new anthology film, Tiny Cinema. First of all, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I am such a huge fan of Butt Boy. It is the movie that I love to um, recommend to my friends. I take great pleasure in recommending to my friends who can handle it. And now with Tiny Cinema, I can do the same thing again. Great. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> too. Well, it's very nice to meet you too. And uh, man, that already makes it so worth it. It makes it all worth it. Uh, I haven't talked to anybody that's seen Butt Boy yet today. So um, I, it makes me very happy to hear that. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. It's it's such, and I think what I learned watching this film is like, I think I kind of am understanding your lane as a filmmaker. And I think what you're doing is unlike anyone else. And oh, I think it's really you. exciting. <laughs> I appreciate you. like the subversiveness and the humor and the boundary pushing, but like it's different because it's sort of, you make jokes that people would assume to be like base or gross out humor, but you do it with such a straight face that it is almost like elevated gross out humor. humor. Great. That's exactly what I meant. You worded it better than I ever could. It's exactly, <laughs> it's exactly what uh, we're trying to get. It's like gross out. I would even say stupid gross out humor, but uh, you can tell the person telling it might not be stupid. Maybe. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. I think we definitely are going to get into that with Tiny Cinema because I think that this movie is like working on a lot of levels. Um, Thank you. But first of all, I think we need to get the elephant out of the room between Butt Boy and this film as a filmmaker. You have a bit of an anal fixation. <laughs> right, yeah. What is it about the human anus that you find so inspiring? Um, I don't know. I don't even know if I really do. I, it, <laughs> you know, this kind of came about, like, Butt Boy came about in a weird way. And it's the same, these have the same origin, both these movies. Uh, it, it's from our comedy sketch group. And uh, they're both based on sketches. And Butt Boy was just one of hundreds of sketches, but we just thought it would be funny if it was turned into a movie. And um, I guess I do have a butt thing. I don't know. I'm trying to trying to think about it, but um, it's not a conscious thing. I mean, I think it's part of the brand of what we're sort of doing after Butt Boy. It's like, well, let's just kind of, let's expand that. And I think what we were trying to do with the anthology version is just, let's try to have more laughs throughout it and show people what we can do in different avenues and almost genres and, break that up and just make it a little bit funny a little bit funnier on the nose let people wink at the camera a little bit more mm. and um i think that's what it is and butts just so happen to get in there sometimes you know as do a lot of gross out things you know i mean butts are funny let's be honest yeah they are, they are. <laughs> i did not expect it to become you know a part Your of brand. my life yeah a part of my <laughs> life like this but here I am, you know? <laughs> Sometimes the art chooses you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So your films kind of thrive in this place that I like, which is discomfort, you know, where it, it definitely pushes the audience a little bit. What is it that you hope the audience experiences when they go and see a, a tiny cinema film? The, well, this one, that, just that. I want them to laugh first and foremost and uh-huh. then feel pretty uncomfortable in a way that they maybe haven't before in a movie and um or an anthology movie anyways that's the hope and i think that uh i think that we achieved that i'm still i'm still figuring it out you know um i think we want people to have fun in it as well we want it to not take it too seriously because we did not take it too seriously we just wanted to create these little stories and and run crazy and epic and dread were so great to let us run crazy like that was a big part of why it is so crazy and um yeah i think we want people to talk about it a little bit you know it's not like it's not very it's not very deep to us it's just sort of these i'm I'm sure there are themes that people can find within it um but we didn't set out to do that with this this was sort of this was sort of, I mean, it is there for sure, but this was sort of an exercise in let's just be funny and play in genre and um, and just have a blast with it, I guess, so. Oh, well, I mean, I definitely am, you know, guilty of like putting my tinfoil hat on when I watch it. Well, I love bit. that, that's my favorite part. That's right, my favorite part too. of anything, yeah. 
Yes, I, I mean, because I think on the surface, the film does kind of like tup, touch on some things like, you know, more base things like necrophilia or sexual dysfunction or, you know, daddy issues. But at the same time, I kind of felt like even though we were all kind of a little bit in on a joke, you were actually getting at some deeper things like toxic masculinity, exploitation, the power of friendship, which I think is a really right. important theme in one right. of the segments. Um, so was that more of a happy accident or was there some design you know, in that? It's so funny as you're saying it, there's way more design in it than I remembered. Because um, everything you just said was discussed beforehand. Um, uh -huh. I think it doesn't get much deeper than that. I think those, like the themes that you just said were what we had in mind, uh, especially with Edna. That was very, um, we wanted that to feel very specific to a female going through something and her independence and all that stuff. Uh, the power of friendship was something I said while we were shooting it. That's what the story is. Um, e everything you just said was brought up. So it was conscious beforehand. Um, we just didn't, uh, you know, we weren't specific of like, you know, if there's something in the background that means something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We didn't get too Kubrick with it. Yeah, right. it was just, <laughs> those things were there for sure. And I think silliness did come first. It was like, well, let's just make this as funny as we can. Um, but also, yeah, that stuff was there. I'm learning. You're educating me, which is great. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, that's kind of what I mean when I was saying it's like elevated gross out, you know, like it, right. it, it plays with these tropes and sort of disarms you in a way with these tropes. And then you kind of come away with it with a deeper theme. And I don't think it's like prescriptive, but I feel like it's a really good mirror about some of these things. It's well, weird. Right. I, I hadn't yeah. thought about it as Edna as like, it's kind of an empowerment film to some degree. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the way we saw it, too. I mean, she realized is you know what she realizes in the end and like you know there's some hope for her in the end you know yeah uh, which was yeah. kind of the idea but <laughs> yeah i love that i mean and it is kind of it's one of the happier endings in it um i mean there's a yeah. very happy ending in one of them yeah quite literally <laughs> um and this is this kind of your take on the Twilight Zone? Because we get kind of the tiny cinema equivalent of a Rod Sterling character sort of guiding us through this. Right, yeah. I mean, that was it. We told him Rod Sterling. This is our version of Rod Sterling. Like, uh, I, I, it is. Yeah, it's, a, it's our take on the Twilight Zone, you know? <laughs> we talked about that the whole time, too. We wanted even, like, the begin. I think in the beginning, when the movie first started, we even had a, a theme that sounded way too similar to it. It's like, all right, that's got to go. But... Um, yeah, that was it. And, you know, it's just based on our comedy content. It's like, let's mix our comedy content with the Twilight Zone and bring it into this thing. And that's sort of what it was. So, yeah, I mean, I know you're a big film lover, film and, and television, too, apparently, like Heat was a big influence. And but boy, can you talk yes. about some of the influences that you drew from for this anthology? Yeah, it was all over the place. It was really fun because they're all different chapters and they have different influences throughout. But like, um, uh, Reanimator was a big one with Edna, since we were just mm -hmm. talking about that. Um, let's see, all it, it was kind of all over the place. Uh, we even had, in my mind, the opening chapter, uh, the game night was sort of, um, Man, just a lot. It had the, it had shining elements to me when they're in the <laughs> kitchen and we're doing the dance, uh, the meltdown. Oh, man, it's a lot of different things. It's always so hard to think of specifics because it's all over the place. Because mm -hmm. what we really wanted was uh, you to get a when you watch each chapter, you get a sense. You can just feel this nostalgic thing, or there's a reminder of a movie, but it's not like the most on the nose we get. I think is Reanimator. Um, mm -hmm because it's you have the thing there and you're yeah. you know, you're reanimating <laughs> someone but everything else was sort of like a, a mix mash of different things and it's just more of a feeling that you get when you watch it and you're like oh I've been here before uh it, or when I was a kid and I would watch horror movies in the 80s I could I remember this sort of tone and feeling especially in the last chapter that's what's on my mind now but um uh in daddy's home when he goes into the house it feels sort of uh even R.L. Steiny at times. <laughs> yeah. Um, but an adult version of that, or, you know, I, I'm trying to, I'm, do, I'm doing a horrible job of trying to think no, of- No, you're not. Specifics, <laughs> but I've had too much coffee today. But I'll just say it was that, it was that. It was, um, 
a feeling that you get of nostalgia if you're a horror lover or whatever lover you 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 feel that throughout the film and i think we did achieve that a lot of people have said that so yeah i, I mean i could definitely i could i can feel that in your films for sure for sure but you definitely right. have your own voice um thank you so one of the things that i really i mean we were talking about game night and there is one of the things I that I think, I don't know if it's throughout each of them, but there is sort of this motif that comes up where it's like taking these jokes or these mo like these um, cliches almost and then taking them to the extreme to the, where they get to a place in horror. Like, uh, that's what she said joke. This is that if that was a horror film, what would that be? Um, is that something like I'd like to know about sort of the inspiration for these when you're writing these? Are you like kind of coming up with these ideas and then expanding upon them? Or just tell me a little bit about your creative process, I guess. Um, well, that one in particular, uh, that was a sketch that we had already done years ago. And it was a one minute version. And, and it was called That's What She it was. The, it was sort of the same thing, but we had one minute to do it. And it was just way more low budget. But when we're writing when we're writing this stuff it's always different it's always like somebody will have one stronger idea or they'll have a scene in mind like for bus for me it was i saw that shootout sort of in my head that big cinematic shootout and it's like well what's the dumbest thing <laughs> what's the dumbest angle for us to get there <laughs> and it's gonna make this big shootout seem all the funnier if we can just make that thing so stupid and, and it just comes from stuff that we made over the years like just figuring out sort of that's sort of our algorithm with stuff like this it's like take the smallest thing and stretch it into this bigger thing and um yeah they're all different i wrote this with ryan and bill who i did a lot of my comedy stuff with and um yeah they would come in with ideas i would come in with ideas and we would meet in the middle and sort of see what happens you know and it's a lot of fun we just like collaborate and also one more thing too like the, that's what she said one it's so our humor it's hard to explain but it's like if we were to be at a bar having a beer right and we're just talking <laughs> about um somebody would almost say a, that's what she said joke which is an old dated joke that shouldn't even be said anymore in my opinion but we would go down this <laughs> rabbit hole it's like rather than talking about that what if one of the, us didn't understand what that means and we would just go in we go into these like crazy scenarios and we're just joking around hanging out joking around and that's sort of what all this comes from it's just conversations when we're hanging out and uh and yeah that's it <laughs> that's so cool i love it i mean i if that was if i was gonna like give somebody a sample of your filmmaking i'm like like let's say they're not convinced they don't want to watch butt boy and i'm like you're crazy but let me show you this one thing i think that might be the clip that i would show because it like really illustrates that humor that you have and just like how weird and uncanny that these things go but with sort of a straight face to some degree um well, yeah you. Yeah, that's very no, nice. That's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I guess my question is, because you live in this sort of like uncanny place, um, do you imagine that Tiny Cinema and Butt Boy exist in the same universe? <sighs> we talked about that a little bit. I, <laughs> I think at one point it did, but now I don't know. I like to think that Butt Boy is a little bit more human and grounded, but I will give you a little tiny Easter egg. Okay. There are some, uh, when we're in, when we're sitting at the bar uh, with the friends and they're talking, he's telling the story about mm -hmm. how he can, um, Detective Fox from Butt Boy is there just a little, for a second in the background. You'll see I him at the bar. him. Yeah, so that's when, <laughs> at one point we were playing with that idea more and then we were like, oh man, like, oh, we actually were gonna do it way more. We were gonna try to tie it in more, but we had, a, it was COVID. So we had all these problems with getting actors to come and do it. And that's literally what it came down to. So there's like, there's parts of it where we're like totally this is the same universe, but then by the end, I kind of even forgot about it to be honest, but then by the end we're like, is it? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's just the truth. I'm being totally transparent, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I mean, I exist in Butt Boy, and then I exist in two different ones. And that, like, we got, we kind of, we kind of tried to throw wrenches in it. Like, Edna's in the first chapter at game night as well. She's at mm -hmm. that, she's at that party in the background, kind of. We wanted it to be sort of like, what, what the fuck? How does that work? 
and not fully explain it, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I know that's yeah, like some I, of the romanticism out of it, but. I See, I, yeah, I, I kind of interpreted it as that this was kind of a very self-contained world. So like there were, cause there were actors that crossed, but in my mind, they were the same characters. Um, right, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but that's interesting to know that that was the detective because I recognized him. Um, but then he shows up in the sort of mafia one. And I was like, oh, it's that character. But it's fun to know that was actually an Easter egg. Yeah. Awesome. Well, congratulations again on Tiny Cinema. I think it's really fantastic. Like I said, I can't wait to show it to all my non-normy friends who can appreciate it. Because I, so I loved it. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was so nice. It was great to meet you. It was great to meet you too. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks, Tyler, for taking the time to chat with us today. If you enjoyed that interview, be sure to subscribe to Pride's YouTube channel and visit us at pride.com.